thank you uh, for joining us today. What a great day. Just um, waiting for, for I'm you. I'm going to introduce you to two uh, thank you, uh, speakers for... this morning. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce you to Vance <coughs> Langford. Uh, Vance is the chair of the board of directors of the Talent Pool Development Society of Calgary. You're joining us today. What a great day. Vance, <laughs> Vance is also a partner with the uh, board of directors a of the Talent Pool Development Society of Calgary here in Calgary, where he leads a successful immigration law practice working with businesses, families, and individuals seeking temporary admission permanent residence and citizenship in Canada. Vance, <laughs> where he leads a successful immigration. Vance is an advocate, writer, and speaker, promoting education and awareness of immigration Law issues. Law practice, working with businesses, families, writer. And nationally, is an executive member of the Canadian Bar Association. My, my extra voices. <laughs> Um, he's also a member of the National Immigration Promoting Law Section, education. as well as an investment committee volunteer with the United Way of Calgary and uh, surrounding area. So Vance also acts as a mentor with the Calgary Region Immigrant Employment Council. So please My join me in welcoming Vance, Vance Lambert to Columbia College. Acts as a Columbia College and the Talent Pool. Link it. Love it. Launch it. I think it's actually link it, launch it, love it. Your career now. I think that's a fantastic title and welcome this morning to students, faculty, and administrators of Columbia College. It's my great pleasure to join all of you for an exciting, informative day exploring the many opportunities and resources available to you as you seek to launch your careers. On behalf of the Talent Pool and our Board of Directors, I bring you warm greetings and encourage you to pursue your dreams for education and employment. The Talent Pool, we're here for you. The Talent Pool Development Society of Calgary is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. We began in 2003 with the mission to facilitate communication and collaboration <coughs> between business, education, and government to maximize the contribution of Calgary's labor force particularly Aboriginal people, internationally trained professionals, youth, mature workers, and people with disabilities. The Talent Pool continues to provide information, leadership, and practical tools while building linkages between the business community and people like you with the talent needed for the Canadian economy now and in the future. On a very practical level, the Talent Pool is a resource center for you as you launch your careers. Do not hesitate to approach the Talent Pool with your questions. We are a hub of information and we are here <coughs> for you. Our program today is one example of the Talent Pool collaborating with the Government of Canada and key stakeholders in the Calgary community to showcase the resources and positive outcomes available for talented educated Canadians. I would like to acknowledge and thank our sponsor for today's event, Service Canada, Western Canada and Territories Region. Service Canada is represented by Anna Marie Ramos, Programs Officer for Citizen Services and Program Delivery. Thank you very much, Anna Marie. The Talent Pool would also like to express our appreciation to Columbia College for partnering with us in this event and helping us to bring together key government, community, and private sector organizations to meet with you. Thank you very much to everybody at, at Columbia College for the work that you've done to make this day possible, especially for your students. We're very pleased that we have the following organizations involved in today presenting you with a very good program. We have Manpower, the Immigrant Access Fund, Momentum, Workopolis, the Calgary Region Immigrant Employment Council, Champions Career Center, the University of Calgary, the City of Calgary Police Service, and Newfield Network. This broad collaboration makes success possible at every level. So as we begin our program today, 
I wish each and every one of you a very positive, interactive experience. Your participation, questions, and thoughts are extremely important and valuable. I hope you'll find today's program to be unique and worthwhile as you prepare for your careers. And now, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you a fellow director of the Talent Pool and <coughs> CEO of Manpower in Calgary, Mr. Randy Upright. Follow up with uh, Vance's uh, introduction, I'm also going to introduce uh, to you uh, Randy Upright. Uh, just uh, take a moment and listen to some of these roles and areas that Randy is involved with. Uh, Chief Executive Officer of Manpower Services, uh, Vice President of the Association of Canadian Search, Employment and Staffing Services, Member of Government Relations Committee, uh, the Chair of Best Practices Working Group, the Chair of a Federal Government Temporary Foreign Worker Committee, Member of the Calgary Economic Development's Global Business Development Committee, Member of the Talent Pool Development Society, the Chair of the Calgary Employer Council for Immigrants, and there's many more. But certainly this list shows uh, an individual dedicated and passionate for developing economic growth and finding ways to develop a strong, talented and diverse workforce. And he focuses on strategies that will enable Alberta's industries to increase productivity and remain globally competitive. Randy was born and raised in Alberta and definitely has a passion for the work and lives of people in Alberta and Canada. So please join me in welcoming Randy. Two introductions, that's huge. <laughs> and I always feel exhausted when I hear my own introduction because it sounds like a lot. Um, Thank you, Patrick, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, job seekers and distinguished presenters. Some of them are my staff. Uh, thank you for being here. It's my great pleasure to be with you this morning and welcome you to this exciting day of learning and sharing. And you're not just here to learn from the presenters, but uh, make sure that you recognize that you're here to learn from each other today as well. Congratulations to Columbia College for hosting and sponsoring this key event for your students. Uh, uh, President Snell, uh, you're an institution uh, just like Columbia College and uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, you've demonstrated innovation, flexibility and responsiveness to the training needs of business, government and the community. This is a really important part of Calgary and the province of Alberta. So congratulations to all of you for getting a Columbia College education. Uh, I commend you for your results and your, your contributions, but, but I also want to say you're actually changing lives every day, and for all of you that are a part of the Columbia College team, uh, you, you also should be commended today. Of course, to Anne-Marie from uh, uh, Service Canada, uh, thank you for demonstrating the partnership and, yes, and, and the work that you folks do. Uh, today is only one example of the many, many things that your organization does that helps to connect people. All of us in the world of employment spend our days scratching our heads wondering what are we going to do uh, as we see this baby boomer exodus happening. We have 19 years of the biggest blip of people who are in our employment markets leaving. And you're our future. And we turn to all of you and we say, we need you. Uh, please uh, contribute and uh, let us help you know how you can best do that. Uh, today, job seekers, your goal is to leave here with more tools to assist you in achieving your career and employment related goals. I think one of the most uh, quoted pieces of leadership advice says, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead to where there's no path and leave a trail. I hope each and every one of you want to be a trailblazer because we need a bunch of trailblazers. Be a leader as you progress, not only through your career, but think about being a leader as you progress through the day today as well. I hope each and every one of you want to do more than get a job. I hope that this is a step today and that you'll follow this with another step and another step and you'll have a wonderful career. I was asked to talk to you by Nicole about what's happening in today's labor market. That's a pretty tough thing to do. Uh, listening to the news, it seems that the only thing that has become certain is uncertainty. But in fact, 
it's a good news story, uh, our employment market. Uh, Tuesday, Manpower, my company, released our quarterly employment outlook survey. This is a large survey of 66,000 employers in 42 countries and territories. The latest survey specifically focused on hiring intentions between April and June 2013. This survey that we have been doing for decades is so simple. We ask one question. Are you planning to hire or not? And the good news is when we talk about Canada, Canada has got a really strong intention. And even better news for each and every one of you is that the best news inside of Canada is in Western Canada and in the Atlantic provinces. So we're really pleased. I can tell you that it's a good news time to be a job seeker. And this is a great city to live and work in. In fact, we see that hiring prospects continue to trend strongly. So that means that it wasn't just this quarter, but even through these really uncertain times and these situations where one day on the news we hear that everything's really good and the next day on the news we hear that oh boy the economy is in trouble our politics are changing and, and everything's changing but the trend is what we look at the trends continuing thanks in part to expected job gains from companies such as walmart green revolution we're seeing some very very positive canadian results Additionally, we're seeing that most of the new jobs that are being created so far this year in Canada are full-time positions, and isn't that great? The continuing trend toward full-time employment is an encouraging sign for us, and that is an indicator that we spend a lot of time and manpower looking at. Uh, when we're creating a lot of temporary positions, or we're creating a lot of part-time positions, it's a different trend. But today, and for this year, it's been full-time employment, and that's a great new story. At Manpower, we look at the world of work every single day. We look at the factors such as economics and politics and how they're influencing opportunities for everyone like you. The one thing that we have come to know is that the most important thing isn't uh, changing in the world of work, and that is that change itself is a part of our everyday lives when we're at work. It's no longer reasonable to say that we're going to manage change. I don't know if any of you have read a book about how to manage change. That's over. That's yesterday's story. Today at work, it's all about change. It's all about knowing how to take on change. It's all about knowing how to adapt and how to be flexible. Change is something that we should all embrace. I'm saying to my people, change is something that we should start to learn how to celebrate because it's a part of the fabric of the world of work. The example that I can give you relates to the world of information technology, and in this space we do a lot of recruiting at Manpower. The thing that I find is very interesting about IT is that today we're recruiting for positions and skills that only three years ago we didn't know existed, just three years back. So that also tells me that we don't know what we're going to be recruiting for in three more years, and that's exciting. Learning should be a lifelong journey. Learning new skills and refining the skills that you have every day. Stacking decisions are often now based on individual performance and available skills, rather than an organization setting up a chart and saying, this is what we're looking for. This is the job description and we're gonna fill that job description. In fact, a lot of you can know that as you grow and change in your careers, you'll create opportunity for yourselves. Organizations today are changing positions to fit the people in those positions. It's an awesome thing for you. We say that a lot has changed. We say at Manpower that something like the, the word capitalism is sort of over and it's sort of a, a dead concept in terms of what drives the economy today. We say that talentism is what's actually driving the economy. Each and every one of you and how you make the world different by the contributions that you bring to work. I thought I would spend a little bit of time talking about, as you embark on today, what would be some things that you should maybe consider. Uh, I don't know what will be said in all of your presentations today, but I thought if I was a job seeker and I was getting started in the world of work, I wouldn't mind a few thoughts. And so I wanted to share what I thought were some good thoughts. One of the things I think each and every one of you should do is define who you are 
and the type of employee that you will be as you leave uh, an educational institution and start looking for uh, career opportunities one of the things that I hope doesn't happen is that by happenstance you become a type of employee define the type of employee that you will be being a highly successful employee starts by listening to what your primary customer needs who's your primary customer your employer when you're an employee you will always get to know that the best relationship that you can have with your employer is one that I would call as an indispensable partnership where your employer needs you because you're a great contributor. I thought about one of my employees who's a great employee. I thought I'd tell you about him. He's not focused on his job description. He's always focused on adapting quickly and does whatever it takes to get the job done. Regardless of his role or the job description, he's always saying to me, what does it take to get this job done? And I will do that. Uh, he's eccentric. He shakes things up. He makes work fun. And in doing so, transforms the people around him. I think of it like thermal dynamics when you're at work. If somebody's really warm and somebody's really cold, and you put those two people together, you get lukewarm. If everybody is really warm, you get a really warm and great environment. Be one of those really warm uh, employees. He's very warm. He's respectful. He's respectful not only to me, the CEO of the company, but he's respectful to his colleagues and co-workers. And he's really respectful to his staff. Isn't that great? <coughs> to that end, he also knows how not to hijack agendas in our company. I love that. Um, I like to be the only one who hijacks everybody's agenda, and so I don't really love it when my staff are hijacking the agenda, and he knows how not to do that, and I think that's terrific. I like to give him a compliment or, or an accolade or some praise, and you know, he is uh, just like a raincoat, and it just jumps right off of him, and, and he can never take praise without saying, ah, but I have to acknowledge, but I have to talk about, I have to tell you who is a part of that. And it's a brilliant quality. And I think that it's really important when somebody's saying, thank you for a job well done, that you can also stop and say, yeah, I did a job well. But I also had people who supported me. And be one of those employees who also acknowledges your coworkers, your employees, and sometimes recognize your boss. We love it. He brings issues forward, and I think this is really great. He always knows when an issue needs to be brought forward. Sometimes an issue is really well brought forward in a public forum. Sometimes it's really well brought forward in a private, private forum. And he knows when to do each, and I think it's really great. He speaks up when others won't. And you know the quality that I see in this person that I think is terrific is he's a question asker. And he asks me questions in a group setting very often that I know he knows the answer to. But I also know that he realizes that other people need to hear that answer too. And so he asks me that question. What a great member of the team he is. But I'm just one person, and this is just one employee, and this is just one set of examples. For each and every one of you, I say, ask the people that you work with what they think are the things that would help you to find yourself as not a good employee, but what I hope you want to be, which is a great employee. It's a key question in uh, uh, asking the people who are going to hire you what's important in that organization. I think that it's really key as well uh, to uh, always look at what does an organization need. Organizations are always changing. Organizations aren't stable and they're not steady places. So I think that it's really key for you to always ask questions. Uh, we have two ears and one mouth. And I think that we should um, recognize the ratio uh, for which we should speak to which we should listen and ask questions, learn about those organizations. Each and every one of you should also <coughs> define your career objectives. Now that you know what kind of person you're going to be at work, what are your objectives? What is it that you want to do? This is like setting the roadmap for where you're going to be. Individuals who know where they are going to go get there faster. Look at the skills that you will need, the type of experience that you have to have, 
and then acquire both of those things. Think also about the type of environment that suits you best. If you don't like working with people, don't get a job working with people. It's so, uh, sort of a, a key element. Most of us come to realize that regardless of our intended careers, we are all in sales in one way or another. Something that I always say to folks at every address that I give to people about their careers, I say, it doesn't matter what program you took and it doesn't matter what job you're going to, remember that you're in sales, even if that is just selling your skills, your abilities, and your opportunities to be the very best person in that job. Don't fall short of telling people about the things that are great about you. I think that one of the things that I always like to impart to a group like you is the importance of uh, uh, the word volunteer. And what does volunteer mean? I have been given the most amazing education that I have received through the activity of volunteering. I didn't learn more at university than I've learned in a boardroom. And, and I think it's very interesting. I knew as I entered my career and as I became the CEO of a company that I needed to keep learning. And who better to <coughs> learn from than amazing people? And I looked around and I figured out that these amazing people sit on boards and they volunteer their time and they're in great organizations. So what did I do? I got myself involved with all of those people. And when you go to volunteer, it's like you're actually supposed to be there to give something to an organization or to a person or to whatever you're giving. <coughs> but the great thing in the whole story is volunteering gives you back 10 times, 50 times, 100 times anything that you would ever give to those organizations. For me, it was around boardroom tables that I learned so much. But I don't think that's the only place that you have a lot of learning that you can do as a volunteer. At SAIT, where I'm a governor, uh, I think that it's very interesting because the students that come and represent at the Board of Governors uh, always say that they're learning so much and they have so much to learn. And a lot of those people have really positioned themselves to get there, to be the student representatives at that Board of Governors table. And it's a very interesting thing, and I'll always say, uh, say, you know, I learn more from the students that sit at that boardroom table than almost anyone else. And they give me a different perspective. They give me a different generational spot than I, I bring to the table. And I love it. Being flexible is probably the most important thing I can tell you to be in the world of work. This is a topic of great discussion. We talk a lot about the flexibility for employees who want to define both when they work and where they will work. Many companies are offering more and more flexibility of work. But one of the things that we don't have uh, you talking about in the world of what's flexible is how do you then be flexible in return? So we spend a lot of time now talking about flexible work environments, but we don't talk about flexible employees. <coughs> so help your employer know how you can be a flexible employee, how you too can fit into their organization. I did mention this just briefly earlier. <coughs> different generations approach work in different ways. And I suggest that each and every one of you look at something that I think is really key right now. I'm, I'm talking about this more and more. We have spoken about there's four, and in fact, there's really five generations of people that we define who are at work today. And we say, well, if you're a, a foreman in a company, it would be a really great idea for you to understand how you might best work with each one of those generations. But so too, when I flip that around and I say to you, uh, you're going to enter the world of work and you're going to have different people who manage you and direct you and guide you. And somebody who is 20 years old and somebody who is 60 years old will have an entirely different perspective on the world of work and how it is that you should work. And so understand from them, talk to them and learn from them. I also say that it's really important for you not only to think about the skills that you want for the job that you're going to be uh, looking to secure now, but think about maybe the next job, or think about how you're going to progress in that company and what skill sets you're going to need then. And if you're looking at an entry level position today, but you really want a management level position, today's the day to start acquiring those skills. 
So determine what it is and take action now. I also say that each and every one of us needs to find a mentor. Many mentors. Um, we don't need one mentor, we need a lot of mentors. And I was very lucky uh, in my life because I started with the world's most amazing mentor, and that was my mom, and she's still my mentor. To this day, she gives me career advice. And so don't just look to the people in your professional organizations and say, I need to learn from you because you've got a great job. And that's how we select mentors <coughs> today. Is we say, that's the job I want, so you're my mentor. It's not really the best strategy. We have so much learning that we can do. Um, my mom taught me one of the most key things, and I always like to reference this because she and I still talk about this uh, 30 years into my career. And that is um, that she, she's always called me an irrational optimist. And it used to be a criticism, but today as I lead my organization, and as I sit on these boards, and I do the work that I do, I think that it's great that I'm optimistic when everyone around me can't see the, the vision. And, and I love it. And so she and I keep talking about that. Look everywhere you can. And I, I'm not trying to sound sappy when I talk about my mom, but it's a really important thing. Maybe one of the best mentors that you can have is one of your kids. Uh, because you have a lot to learn from them. So uh, think about who your mentors are, document who they are, and, and go to them for that best advice. <coughs> Every one of us needs to be a leader, uh, whether we are um, at, at uh, this level on the org chart or this level on the org chart. We all get to be a leader, so be a leader. Um, Look up everything you can about being a leader. Read every book that you can. Talk to everyone that you can. Figure out what it means to be a leader. A leader is somebody that people follow. And that's all I'll tell you for today because this is a whole day's conversation. I think positive thinking is uh, something that each and every one of us have to do. If you're having the worst possible day at work, find the silver lining in the day. Find the silver lining in your organization. Each and every one of you needs to have a network and you need to build that network. Um, I think the world of Facebook has taught us about quality versus quantity. I say to you, build a quality network of people. Don't build a high quantity network. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to say as you talk about uh, moving into your jobs and what you're going to do, there's a lot of discussions that have taken place about work-life balance. I say to my staff, and three of them are sitting here, but anytime I can, I say work-life balance is dead. It's a concept that's over. It's a piece of the past. Get rid of it. It's work-life blending now. Because this world of technology means tons of us are carrying these devices around. Uh, Nicole and I, as we prepared for this event, um, would exchange emails at 10 o'clock at night. Well, we were working then. But in the day, I would also sometimes be um, calling to find out you know, what my dog's vet uh, results were. But the problem with that work-life blend situation is that we have to be present. When you get to work, put the devices away and be present. Be there for your job and recognize that the blend should be really very much as it should be in that you don't spend all of your personal time working and you too should spend all of your work time personally. So with that being said, good luck with the day today. Um, I think that one of the most important things that I can tell you is that though you may be thinking that you're here to learn, you're also here to teach, you're here to inspire, and you're here to motivate each other. Thank you.